Hi guys, I'm Lisa Ely with Lisa Ely Gardens and I love helping families and kids learn about digging in and growing so much fun stuff while they're learning and laughing in the garden. So I'm really excited that you're joining me here today and I especially wanna thank Kellogg for inviting me to go live with you guys um, today to talk about one of my favorite things, soil, which is always the fancy word for dirt. That's really kind of the first thing I always tell kids when I'm helping them learn about being in the garden or even my own kids is if we're in the garden, we get to wear our fancy imaginary garden hat and we get to use fancy words like soil. Uh, no, but seriously, as you know, soil is one of the most important parts of the garden. If you don't have soil, you don't really have the ability to plant and grow anything in it. So we need soil. But when you start with your kids in the garden, you really wanna teach them about soil. And do you really know how to do that? I didn't know how to do that until my kids started asking, why are we buying these bags of soil? Why don't we just use the dirt that we already have? And it made me realize that so many times as parents, we wanna do great things with our kids. We wanna build these great gardens, but we forget to teach them the basics. So today, I'm just gonna kinda of give you a soil lesson that you can share with the kids and help them understand the differences between good and bad soil or dirt for the garden. So it all starts with understanding what soil is. And soil is amazing. I love using this tool when I'm out there in the garden with the kids. It's a magnifying glass, but this is one of the first ways that they can go explore soil. They can go take it, look in, and try to see all the different particles in living things inside soil. There is so much going on. Uh, but when you break it down, there's really different types of soil. And some of you guys, depending on where you live, uh, I'm not sure, I'm in Southern California and my backyard is literally clay. Um, some people have silt or sand and some of us are very lucky to have amended and have a lot of great soil, kind of like when we amend with all the Kellogg soil. Uh, but here, let me show you. Instead of talking so much, I've got some examples here, and this is a good way to show the kids. So the first thing is looking at this type of soil. This is sand. You're right, it is exactly like what is in the playground. It's sand, it's loose. When you get an example like this and you show the kids, ask them if they were a plant, what would happen if they were trying to stand in here? Chances are they would just fall over. And then the next one is clay. Clay is probably not great for the garden, but man, it's fun to play with. We love playing with the clay. This is something, if you have clay in your yard, let the kids explore it. We're not gonna be able to plant in it because if you think about it, this is so tight that roots can't get through this and the plant will just be oh stuck i kind of tell kids it's like if i never let you get bigger shoes and your feet were stuck in that small pair of shoes that's what a plant is going to feel like if you try to plant in clay however clay is really fun to play with you could do clay drawings painting with clay and definitely the old-fashioned mud cakes because clay is a lot like mud um, and then there's silt which is kind of a combination of both of these but then my absolute favorite is loam and look at this rich yummy soil i took this straight from our garden uh this afternoon and it is so good and this is a great test is have kids try to make a baseball with the soil and you can see i kind of can make a ball here but it's loose and it breaks up that shows that the roots can actually grow in this so this is loam and this is a really good soil to be planting in and if you see over here when i make a baseball with the clay and it's really muddy it doesn't break up it just holds i could go throw this at someone probably get in trouble but uh it's holding so tight that it's not good for planting and then with the sand if I try to make a ball it just falls look at that so watch this test one more time and you go to the loam and you can see that it's like a baseball and it kind of just breaks right up so that's a really fun way and I can tell you once you learn how to test for your soil and you teach the kids to do that on their own they're gonna go out there every garden season whether it's the fall spring or summer and they're gonna say hey wait a minute let me test the soil and they're gonna grab it and go yep this is actually really good 
Or if it's not good, they're gonna say, oh, we need to go amend it. And obviously when you go to the home centers or garden centers, there are so many different selections of soil that you can choose from to help amend your soil so it can get to look just like this. But why is this even important? Well, kids need to understand it's about drainage. So I have a fun way to show kids the different drainage properties. It's kind of like doing science in the backyard, a little garden experiment, but it helps them understand the importance. Because if you don't teach the whys and you just say how, it's not gonna stick with them. They're not gonna be as interested. So make it fun for them. Uh, so this is just a quick example to teach kids about the drainage properties. And with sand, when I put it in, so all I did was get a paper towel, a little cup, and I'm just going to put a little bit of sand in here. And we could do this scientifically and really measure. And then I'm gonna pour some water in. And watch what happens. Oops, when I pour the water in, it falls right through. So the sand is a little bit muddier, but what happens is the drainage often will just squeeze right, oh, <laughs> it's a little messy. But you can see it just starts to drip right through. Now, if I do the same thing with the clay, and I put a handful of clay. Again, I'm just doing this loosey-goosey because this is what we do in the backyard is we just have fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. If your kids want to do this as a science experiment, they would actually want to measure and do everything properly. But when I pour the same amount of water in here, nothing drains out because the property, that clay, is just absorbing the water. So what happens to plants when they're stuck in clay? They drown out. They get water bogged and they can't grow. We always talk about good drainage. And now, same thing, put a paper towel, clump of the loam right in there, and then pour that water in. And you're gonna see, let's see if we can get that shot it starts draining through, but it's only dripping. Can you guys see that right there? Isn't that cool? I love science experiments. But this is kind of giving the kids an underground view of what's happening. So how I explain it is with the sand, if the water's coming in and I'm a plant, I'm like, I can't, the water's going too fast. If I'm with the clay and the water, it's getting watered and I'm a plant and the roots of the plant are trying to get the water, I'm like, oh, oh, oh I'm overfilling with water. Loam, it's just like drinking out of a drinking fountain. You have time to drink a little, swallow, and then get more if you need to. So I love this little experiment, and this takes, what, it only took five minutes. It takes five minutes to teach your kids the basics of soil and get them excited about really starting a garden with the right type of dirt or soil. So I love the loam, it's great. Another thing you can do to kind of compare soil is go get a Tupperware container like this and just ask kids to go somewhere, whether it's in their schoolyard, the front yard, or the park, and start observing this. This I'm not going to turn into a planter, but I'm gonna let the kids explore and see wonder of what's happening in the soil. And what's cool about this, I can guarantee after a week or two, you'll start noticing either there's gonna be worms or other critters, or maybe even plants or weeds are gonna to start to grow. This is a cool experiment to do too, to see what gardens are like throughout your community. So get three or four of these plastic shoe boxes and pick one, fill one up with soil from the park, one from your yard, and maybe one from the school and have them experiment and see the different qualities. The other item I have here is this glass jar. So this is something I've always done with the kids too. I fill up these glass jars put some water in it, and then I literally just filled this up about four hours ago, and you can start seeing the layers of what's happening underground. So this teaches them the qualities and that the sand and everything, the different layers go down. So it's really kind of fun, and after a couple more days, this will really layer into the different heavier pieces of the dirt and soil. So I love all of this. It gets kids excited about planting, but then, what do, how, what do we start with planting? You gotta start small. And I have an idea right over here for you. So right over here is I have a makeshift start of our fall garden. And I'm just gonna have the kids and our family work in doing small containers. Um, again, 
kids have small hands, you want them to be able to manage. And this is a great space for working in a fall garden. This is just a wood box or a metal canister or a metal tub. The key is to make sure you have something with holes in it and that it can have, so it can have drainage. So everything we learned about the soil, about drainage, we want to make sure we have that in our containers that we are going to put our fall garden into. Now, there's always the debate if, you, if you're not doing a container or you have bigger containers, um, we also use really big galvanized metal tubs for our gardens or our community plot and the big debate is do you remove all the soil add in new do you just plant right on top of what you had for your summer a lot of it depends on what you, what you have so if your soil is really compacted and heavy you want to kind of till it a little bit I'm not a person who likes to dig up everything from the bottom and scoop it to the top, I just like to break it up and then I add a amendment or add some extra soil on top to add in some fresh nutrients to my gardens. I know there's a number of different philosophies for that, but for kids, just getting that top layer and having them use their hands to dig in and just kind of air out the soil is the best thing. You don't want it to be such a chore for them. Um, but with the containers, we always then want to add in potting soil. So this is what's really important, is getting that bag of soil, of course I'm using Kellogg, and just pouring it right in. Now this is the fun part, let the kids feel it. This has actually been outside all day, so it's a little warm, and then kind of fluff it up. And you can mix in if you use manures, or you want to find some soil around the yard and mix it in, that is great. Uh, and this is just the Kellogg potting soil. Um, I will tell you, they don't tell me I have to say anything about their soil when they invite me to come speak about the gardens, but I do use their soils quite a bit, especially for the containers. If you have a container that you've already used for your summer garden, you're going to notice that a lot of the soil has depleted and gone away. You absolutely want to add in a fresh layer before you start putting in the winter garden or even your fall garden. Um, and I use this as a shovel. Hands are number one tool. I love my hands in the garden. I love kids to get their hands dirty. Uh, but I picked this up at an estate sale for a quarter and I thought this was really fun for kids to use. You don't always have to have a garden tool tool or big shovel. This is perfect for little hands and it kind of makes it fun. It's doing something a little different. So they kind of just scoop it up, flip it out. And then for a container garden, you do need to decide what you want to plant. For our winter or fall gardens, we love lettuce. So I just use the seedlings that I get at the garden center, open them up, make sure we use our magnifying glass and go, wow, look at those roots. Can you guys even see that at home through the magnifying glass? Isn't that cool? Can you imagine? Kids, let them see these roots. What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? They're gonna handle this too hard and they're gonna learn if you're not careful with it and if you don't treat this like a little baby bunny, the plant's going to die. If it dies, it's okay because our goal is to get kids excited about learning and being in the garden. And then you just place that little seedling of lettuce right in the garden. Now for a box like this, lettuce is really good. So leafy vegetables or leafy herbs are what you want to use in something like this. You don't want to have something that needs a deep root system, but leafy herbs, leafy vegetables work great in something like this because they have a shallow root system. Um, the other thing in choosing this, you can either go shopping at the garden center, see what's on the rack, see what the kids want to do, or in our family, I have the book of seeds. And this was just an old CD kind of holder. And now it's turned into our seed book. And the kids each season will go through, they'll go, oh, wow, okay, butterhead lettuce. And I actually challenge them now to turn over all the seeds, take a look and decide, is this something that's the time of season to plant. And the back of seed packs for kids is such a magical place. There's so much information for them. And this will tell them right now that we can actually start planting this mild winters, September to April. So this is something I'm sure they would choose, but you can see all the different selections. It's a really good way for small hands to flip through the seeds and be able to read them clearly. So this is something that's fun, it's easy, and it should be a really great way to get your fall 
fall or winter garden started. So thank you again for joining me. I've always loved being here and sharing my ideas with you. Check out my website, Lisa Ely Gardens. I have a blog with fun activities and different ways of thinking about how you can teach your passion of gardening to your kids. So take care. Thank you, Kellogg. Thank you guys for watching.